Hey guys, I picked up the Sencor VA62 a few weeks ago and did a video on it and was happy to see that it works great. Well, the functions seem to work properly. Since then I've got a user's manual so I know how to use all the features. And it works fantastic on modern TVs. By modern I mean TVs that use a 44 megahertz IF frequency. However, all the older TVs I mostly work on use a 21 megahertz IF frequency. What the IF frequency is, is the channels that you pick up via the antenna are, oh, I don't know, they range from something like around 50 some megahertz to a couple hundred megahertz. Well, before those can get amplified, they need to be brought down to a more manageable level and a uniform level. So, right after the antenna and maybe one stage of RF amplification, there's a mixer between a local oscillator and the received signal, and the difference is the IF frequency. So, this device is designed for more modern TVs that used 44 megahertz, and the programmable oscillator covers 35 to 50 to cover the, uh, on either side of that that range, the 44 megahertz frequency. Well, I got to thinking that it'd be really, really nice if this device could be modified somehow to go down to, oh, say, 18, 19, 20 megahertz or so. And then I could use it with my vintage TVs as well. Somebody online nicely, kindly, scanned all the schematics, and this is a very elaborate, many, many pages, it's a very complex device. Eventually I found where the programmable oscillator is and it's based on a PLL and a high frequency oscillator. A PLL is a device that uh, you can program to keep an analog oscillator tuned into a certain frequency. Basically it generates a DC voltage that's applied to a variable capacitor of a reactor diode. It's part of a tank circuit in an, in an oscillator. So I was thinking, well, if I take that PLL, which is a digital circuit, and maybe tweak it a bit, like say divide the frequency somewhere by two or multiply it by two, whatever I need to do to trick this thing into instead of doing 35 to 50, maybe do 17 and a half to 25. But uh, I thought, well, even if I do that, the oscillator that it might be too out of its range. But I thought it had, the idea had some merit, so I was going to tinker around with it. Well, somebody else had the idea that, well, maybe instead of messing with the oscillator, how about we modify the programming in this thing? So it turns out there's a microcontroller in here to control the LCD displays and read the keypad and program that PLL. I thought, well, sure, but I used to program microcontrollers for a living and I thought it might be a little tricky or a little involved to try to decompile the assembler code and the EEPROM and figure the right spot to modify the code, but hey, uh, somebody indeed has. And uh, he showed me some screenshots of his, he got his programmable oscillator going all the way down to I think it was 19 megahertz or so by reprogramming that EEPROM. Um, he asked me if I had an EEPROM programmer and alas I got rid of all my equipment for programming microcontrollers and EEPROMs and so on so I asked him hey if I send you a blank could you program it for me and he said well I've actually got a spare so he programmed one for me and mailed it to me and it has arrived so inside of here should be a 2716 Beatron. And there we go. Well, he's written on there 3 to 99. Uh, I'll be impressed if the thing can actually do that full range. It'd be awesome. As long as I can get down to a, into, into the uh, low 20s, I'll be happy. So now the challenge is to pop this sucker open and pop out the old EEPROM and pop this one in. My one concern is that 
I imagine there were different revisions of this, and the firmware in his might not work in mine, but let's keep our fingers crossed. So, next thing I need to do is figure out how exactly to open this up. Seem to be some Phillips screws on the back, so that's where I'll start. I removed those four screws from the back and four from underneath. And the back comes right off. So, see a whole lot of metal there. But, turn around, and there's where the goodies are on this side. Looks like all the high frequency RF stuff is down here. I bet that's where that phase lock loop is, so this is where I was going to start poking around. Let's see, where's the microcontroller? Oh, there it is. That's pretty easy to get at. So on this side of the device we have power transformer, power supply, and there is the microcontroller, and there is the old EEPROM. So that's what I'm going to pop out. Let's see what we've got on the other side. Looks like more power supply circuitry and this stuff. I'm not sure. Looks like some precision op amps and high quality capacitors and so on. None of the center. There's some more stuff behind this metal box. I'm not going to mess with any of that stuff because I'm sure don't want to break anything. Okay, I've popped it in. One thing that's got me a little bit concerned though is that the old one was a 2732, which as memory serves is I think a 4K byte device. But I just put in a 2716, which is was, was, only a 2 kilobyte device, meaning it's only half the storage space. So, well. <laughs> If we're lucky, maybe they just ran out of 2716s and went to 2732s and they just didn't use half of it. I uh, guess there's only one way to find out, so here goes. Well, it turned on and we've got 35.00 going there. Power up the scope and hook up the output to the RF out. Verify that what the display says is actually true. So, there's a sine wave on my scoop. And if I put on the frequency time mode, 35 megahertz. Alright, so. Now, let's 
see. That's supposed to be the lowest range, so let's just go to 30. And we have got 30 on the scope. Okay, there's 30 megahertz, so let's try 25. Alright, we got 25. If you recall, I also had a very dirty control before. Well, I've since cleaned that with some deoxid. Right, let's keep going. Let's try 21. We've got 21. Let's see. I guess I'll just keep going down. How about 18? We've got 18. So this is already below where I actually need to go. But, uh, let's see how far we go. How about we go all the way down to 5? I guess I've got to type in the 05. 0500. Nope. It says 5 on the display, but we've actually got 33 megahertz out. I figured it was going was to bottom out somewhere. How about we try 10? Nope, doesn't like 10. Doesn't like 15 either. Or 18. Huh, seems to be kind of stuck now. Okay, I'm back to 35 now. There's 25. Seems like if once you go too low, uh, nothing under 35 works anymore until you go back up to 35, then you can drop it back down. So there we go. There, now we can do 15. It's a little lumpy looking, but it is 15 megahertz. There's 11. <laughs> What I suspect is happening now is that even though the oscillator is doing 11 megahertz, I bet there's some kind of bandpass filter on the output amps that's optimized for the 35 to 50 megahertz range, so it's probably attenuating the signal. I'll back up to 22, it's not bad. I notice when I get it back to 35, how the amplitude increases. I bet there's some kind of filter that's knocking down the lower frequencies, but that's alright. 40 megahertz, even higher. You can see how it's nice and clean, but down at say 25. It's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. That's still for me to be able to dial in that exact frequency. The reason that's so useful is that for a lot of the TV alignments I do, they uh, you go through and you tune each stage to a specific frequency, like 21.25 or 23.75, and so on. And in the past, I've had to use like an RF generator and a, and a frequency counter, and it'll drift with temperature and, and so on. But being able to dial in like 2375 is fantastic, although <laughs> it looks a little lumpy. But uh, that kind of stuff, even though it looks distorted, doesn't matter so much because the fundamental frequency is still. 23.75. Those harmonics just aren't going to affect the the, uh, the IF alignment process. It's 26.30. It's weird that on that one frequency, so I just went a little higher in frequency and it's nice and clean, but the lower frequency gets kind of distorted. The 22 is clean. The 24 and 25 were a little ugly. I guess the only way to find out how well this is going to work is to actually try it. So next time I do a TV alignment on a vintage set, I'll definitely give this a try. So far, so good. It, uh, the, the hardware ROM modification seems to be a success. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I'm looking into doing a hardware mod on a Suncor VA62. If you want to know who modified this and and how and where you can get one 
I'll leave that up to the guy that actually did it, but if you go to Video Karma and go to the equipment section of the forum, you'll find a thread about this.